I think one of the emerging stories is that uh, cisplatin or carboplatin uh, type drugs will be very important for triple septin negative breast cancer. That's a little bit controversial because there's been a trial recently for metastatic breast cancer which showed that only those with the BRCA mutations or DNA repair mutations had a benefit from platinum type drugs and for the others it made no difference compared to taxanes. However, the point is made that if you look at new adjuvant where the tumour is de novo rather than relapse, it might be rather different. And so there was a recommendation put forward that uh, patients who are having new adjuvant chemotherapy or adjuvant therapy for triple seven negative breast cancer should have platinum containing compounds. Uh, so there's a point of interesting discussion. Uh, with regard to other new messages, Androgen receptor has been known to be expressed in triple septin negative breast cancer, but actually it's more commonly expressed in ER positive breast cancer. Nevertheless, people have looked at single agent anti androgen therapy, and the results are very low response rate, only about 7%. And uh, so people might be worried about giving that sort of therapy to patients rather than chemotherapy. So it's been difficult to set up trials in that area. But nevertheless, it looks an interesting possibility. But I, I think it might well be that patients who are third or fourth line will get offered it rather than first line, which will always make it hard to establish a role. Perhaps there's most excitement about immunotherapy, uh, where breast cancer has lagged behind other tumour types like head and neck, uh, melanoma, bladder, and small cell lung cancer. And uh, several studies have shown very low responses, but in a very heterogeneous group of patients. Uh, we've just seen a large study published in New England Journal of Medicine comparing taxanes uh, versus a PDL1 blocking drug. And the results are intriguing, and they're showing about a, a two-month extension in progression-free survival, similar to a two-month extension in overall survival, although only the former is significant. But interestingly, the ratio is about the same, as often you see the ratio is much lower in overall survival than in progression-free survival. But I have to emphasize this is very early data, and uh, you're not seeing a plateau in survival or progression-free survival like uh, has been seen in other tumor types. Nevertheless, it's the first big study, and I think the samples have been collected to try and analyze in more detail who might benefit most. Along that line, uh, expression of PDL1 in the tumors has been shown to be correlated quite well with a much better response than negative tumors. So I think there is hope that this will be a useful classifier. There's much to be done in looking at these pathways and uh, picking the right patients.